In this video, I'm going to be explaining why I think a torsion-based regime is the best way to build bone, including increasing bone length. In the height increase community, Wolf's Law is the most commonly cited principle behind mechanical loading regimes. Julius Wolf lived in the 19th century. Using Wolf's Law implies a bone is some kind of all-knowing organ that adapts in an optimum amount to all those placed upon it and we can clearly see that that is not the case. For example, playing basketball won't necessarily make you taller just because you wanted to. I think looking at bone from a fluid-based perspective is a better way to analyze how to optimally load bone. Fluid-based perspective explains a lot of things, like why dynamic loading is so much more effective at building bone than static movement. Once the load is initially applied in static movement, there's not a lot of fluid movement. Hence why in a lot of studies, static movement has been shown not to be effective in building bone. A fluid perspective on bone explains why impact is effective at building bone because it drives the fluid forces within the bone. Hydrostatic pressure has been shown to induce cellular differentiation. Hydrostatic pressure would of course be affected by fluid forces. Interstitial fluid flow increases nutrient delivery to cells, including growth plate cells and articular cartilage via diffusion. This is affected by fluid forces. Fluid forces impact the active cytoskeleton of a cell, affecting proliferation and differentiation. All these forces and possibly others can lead to changes in bone, including bone length, therefore height. Hiro Hiroki Okoda has suggested that the best way to load a bone is via dynamic lateral loading of the epiphysis. The epiphysis is more easily deformable than the diaphysis of the bone, thus it would be, would be optimal to load there as it could drive fluid forces throughout the entire bone. But we can also see that dynamic exercises with a significant force that involve high torsion, such as tennis and swimming, can increase bone size in the arms. Torsion, torsion may be effective because if we think of bone in a fluid way, what's the most effective way to get water out of a sponge? By squeezing it, by applying that dynamic torsional force. The reason that there's so many more anecdotal cases of the arm bones increasing in size is not the legs is mainly that the hand can grip things. So the arm bones are exposed to so much more dynamic loading, including torsional loads. Squats and deadlifts are not nearly as effective as what sort of exercise the arms goes through. Running is dynamic in a way and has some torsional force, but it does not usually typically involve a lot of weight. Most of the cases of an anecdotal increases in size, such as Devon Larratt, are significant weight in ex exercises. Devon Lerritt is um, an arm wrestler who reported um, a unilateral increase in bone length in his, of his arms. The problem with things like tennis and baseball pitching is that the load up is applied so intermittently and we, in an inconsistent manner. I believe anecdotally that weightlifters tend to have longer arms than normal for their height. Is this due to selection bias or is it due to heavy torsional force? applied by things such as hammer curls, dumbbell press with twists, dumbbell overhead press with twists, and so on. Even something like a farmer's walk is going to apply torsional loads on the arms just due to stabilizing, but the farmer's walk is not that dyn dynamic, so therefore there won't be as much fluid mo movement as there could be potentially. Um, some people have tested farmer's walk for arm, width, arm length, not for torsional stress, but for tensiles, tensile strain and plastic deformation, but I don't think they got any results. But I do think that we have some good exercises that'll work on the arms. I think moderate weight, like 50 pounds for arms at least, um, and at least moderate speed reps. The problem with higher weight is that it slows the, the, rep, the rep speed down. Um, but you do need that, that weight to sort of drive the fluid movement. We want to find that balance between rep, rep speed and, and weight. Um, I looked at this, the effect of swimming on bone length in mice, and the mice that were weighted somehow got longer arms in the studies. But in the studies, where no weight was applied, the swimming mice did not get longer limbs in the arms and in fact had shorter limbs than non-swimming mice. Um, the problem right now, we have we have arm exercises, but the problem is a le legs issue. I'm, so I'm testing stuff right, right now, um, trying unilateral exercises, farmer's walk type movements where you're stepping off one leg, lunges, kicking work could work if you could add weight somehow. Um, in the high increase community, they, it suggests kicking. A lot, lots of people try kicking, but the problem is that, again, there needs to be some kind of weight applied. So that, that's where I'm at. So that's why I think that torsion could potentially increase bone length.